My name is Nicholas Wildstar, and I am a libertarian candidate running for California governor. I did run in 2014 as an independent candidate and am now running as a libertarian. I got inspired to join the Libertarian Party as well as run for office by hearing Dr. Ron Paul speak. I got very involved in this 2012 presidential election campaign and was introduced to libertarianism for the first time. And during that time, I was very involved in the Occupy and Anonymous movement. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but that was where there were millions of people in the streets of uh, California, New York, um, Wisconsin, everywhere throughout the state that were pretty much occupying campuses, um, federal buildings, etc., to speak against economic inequality and um, social abuses, etc. And I was very involved in that movement and have been involved in community activism ever since then. So at this time, I'm pretty much using that energy to inspire young people to vote libertarian. So um, again, in 2014, I did run as an independent and I learned a lot from that election. And what I learned was a lot of people would like to get away from the two-party system. And we see that now with our current political climate. Uh, two things that I want to talk with you tonight here about is the political climate and what George was speaking about that uh, stuck on we must choose between one of the two lesser evils. So um, here in California, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have about 500,000 registered libertarians. We have about 200,000 um, uh, members of the Libertarian Party. And in the last presidential election, about 70% of those libertarians came out to vote. So it's a great possibility that, again, here in this gubernatorial race, that we could steal an election. You have the Democratic candidates that are heavily unpopular, as well as the Republican Party now, that are very unfavorable. And people are looking at the two-party system as being just one, that old party duopoly that does not serve we the people. So the people are primed and ready and looking for an opportunity to get away from the two-party system. And because it is an open primary, whether you're Republican, Democrat, no party preference, whatever the case may be, you have an opportunity to vote for any candidate. So that gives us an opportunity to come on, onto the scene and steal the show. So that's exactly what I think we would have an opportunity to do, especially again since with this gubernatorial race, they're expecting it to be an extremely low voter turnout. So let's say hypothetically we get a million people that show up at the polls collectively in the June election. If there's 28 candidates running for governor, 11 of them are Democrats, and I believe nine or so are Republicans. So if the hard right comes out and the hard left comes out, and they end up splitting up their votes between those two parties, let's say the Republicans get a quarter mill and the Democrats get a quarter mill, that leaves 500,000 votes up for grabs. If we get that 70% vote base of libertarians to come out and vote, those no party preference voters and the majority of independent voters that don't want to choose either or. A poll was just done by ABC News for gubernatorial candidates out of a group of 600 plus, um, about 20% of them selected Gavin Newsom. Now, there was another 20 plus percent that were undecided. So that means that the undecided voters could easily choose to vote third party and select a libertarian and give us all an opportunity to win our elections. Not just in the governor's race, but for assembly, for senate, for every office to where all of these candidates are running. So George is absolutely right. What we have to do at this point is just know that we can win. Get mobilized once again. The majority of you guys here have been involved in the Libertarian Party since its foundation, and I greatly appreciate you creating that for us, because it gives people like me, a 36-year-old man, you know, black man, an opportunity to elevate the party to the next level. And the people are ready for a third party generation to come along and take over the political system. If you look at what's happening now with the Parkland students, 
um, they're a younger generation. They're not going to vote Republican. They're not going to vote Democrat. So when the time comes where they're of voting age and they're ready to vote for a candidate, they're going to be open to a third party candidate. So the third, the revolution of the third party candidates winning an election is coming. It's just, when is that going to come? Are we going to be the ones that initiate that? Uh, that takeover? Yes. Are we, uh, thank you. Are we going to allow a, a younger generation that has been indoctrinated to believe that government needs to be in control of everything? That's what happens systematically. Government does is every 10 years or so, every 20 years or so, they indoctrinate another generation to make them believe as to why they should stay in power. So it is unfortunate that the majority of the people that we speak with are sheeple. They're people, but they have this herd-like mentality that they need to be told what to do, where to go, how to do it, and the only people that is keeping us from killing each other and harming each other is the government. We are the ones keeping each other in, in alignment with each other. We're peaceful, loving individuals, and with or without government, we're always going to be that way. So our, it's unfortunate that our younger generation are now being told that in order to protect us, we need to not be able to protect ourselves and to take away our Second Amendment right. Well, we know that's just grounds for genocide. <laughs> We're still giving people with guns authority to take away our guns. Violence cannot beget violence. And that's exactly what they're being told. We need to teach them that peace is the way. And if we can let a libertarian candidate finally for once get on a uh, on a stage on a platform to where they have an opportunity to get this message out and across to the masses then it's a great possibility that again for a small fraction of people we can end up changing the golden state goal and that's my intention is to pretty much again take advantage of this next election take advantage of the two-party system take advantage of people being pissed off with the old party system and get them to vote libertarian. And all we have to do really is just get in their ear. The message of liberty is easy, it's simple. And as much as we want to talk about the principle of liberty, really at this point, all we got to do is talk about how bad the other two parties are. It's that easy. <laughs> and then just say, hey, if you don't like them, vote libertarian. And that's simply what it's all about. So I am again running for governor, and because I am a grassroots candidate, I am running around the state, funding myself. My campaign is completely crowdfunded. Right now, my crowdfund on a crowd pack is about $2,700. A lot of people think that's how much money I have. No, that's how much I've accumulated so far to get signs and bumper stickers and travel around the state and uh, commercials on YouTube and Facebook. The, uh, the minimum amount of um, ad buys on YouTube to make it effective is $500. And that's for two weeks. So if I want to run two ads for one month, twice, you know, that's $2,000, you know? So that money, it, it, we're always in need of funds to fight the two-party system. We're not corporate-owned candidates. We don't have lobbyists. We don't have unions giving us money. Your endorsements count as well. Even though you think I'm a nobody, you're somebody. So all of your voices matter, and if you can join them together so more people can hear them, the better. Um, because of a lot of people getting involved in my campaign and spreading the word through social media, I've been able to finance myself and been able to get ballot access. It was $4,000 to get on the ballot, but because somebody heard about my campaign through word of mouth, uh, somebody stepped up and paid that ballot access fee for me. So now I'll... Thank you very much. <laughs> So it's because of people like you that people like me have an opportunity to represent the Libertarian Party. And I, again, would love to have a chance to just broaden that message and reach more people in the state. So please get involved any way that you can. If you can't contribute with your money, contribute with your time, your voice. As I said, you can endorse. 
um, if you have a certain cer uh, skill or service that you'd like to provide that would assist us in reaching more people, that would help as well. But definitely, of course, just make sure you keep talking about us. Keep talking about your libertarian candidates here in the state that are running for office. Because we do have a chance to oppose the, the two-party system. So thank you very much for your time. I don't want to hold you guys up. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Is that okay? It's okay. Yeah? All right. Any questions, anyone? No? All right, cool. Well, I do. I left my mailing list, so if you'd like to. All right, thank you. Uh, among the uh, governors that were in the debate last night, who did you meet the best? I actually did not watch it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't either. It, it was a waste of time. I, mean, I didn't either. I just spent the last two minutes. <laughs> yeah. And what's sad is a lot of people don't even know the candidates that were invited on stage had to have fundraised $100,000. The moderators never tell people that. Right. The sponsors of the event never tell the, the viewers that. So the people that watch at home always believe that the candidates that they see on stage during the, the debates are the only ones available. That is not true. And of course, they're not going to give somebody like me an opportunity to get on stage with these candidates where I would have an opportunity to speak about reducing government and cutting our debt. Uh, and cutting our spending and cutting our taxes. So, of course, they're not going to get someone like me an opportunity. We have to take advantage of that opportunity. The only way that we're going to be able to do that is by making sure that our libertarian candidates proceed through that June primary and are able to get through to that uh, November election and, and uh, general election in November. So, uh, yes, sir. Uh, briefly, what is some of your background? Well, I, like I said, I was involved in community activism for the past 10 years or so with Anonymous and Occupy, and I've been involved in several marches and protests throughout the state ever since then. I've also been a working class citizen for the past 20 years, had to work to pay my bills. So I have experience in project management, financial management, and customer relations. And I'm um, also a recording artist. I'm known as the rap artist Q-Ball. So uh, I actually moved to California from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to pursue a musical career. So my first album, The Real, is available on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, all that good stuff. And one of my songs is in the movie Scary Movie 4. And my new album right now is called Evolve and Die. It's more so promoting a political tone and message and hopefully awakening people's minds to, you know, a third party candidate. So it's available right now on Spotify. It's called Evolve or Die. Even if you don't listen to rap music, trust me, it is something that could be very um, existential <laughs> in many ways and, and enlightening. So uh, music has been my background, but as I said to you before, my goal with music was to awaken others and um, pretty much just let them know the truth of the matter. A lot of what we per what we receive from media has has all been manufactured. They make it seem as if things are the way that they are. There's a rapper named Cardi B. You guys probably don't know her, but <laughs> she's a very successful female rapper, and uh, she actually just made headlines recently for complaining about government taking her money because she just became a successful rapper, and now the government is coming along, Uncle Sam, snatching up 40 percent. So she's got this video out that's you know two million views plus, you know, since it came out on Wednesday about her being anti-taxation. That's exactly what we need. More people being aware of what we don't want. And voices like hers, I absolutely help voices like mine. Voices like yours be heard. So music is a very powerful tool, and I think we do need more muses in politics. I mean, uh, Ronald Reagan was an actor, and <laughs> he made it very far. He was the governor of California and then proceeded on to become president. So we need more people that are relative to the average person. And I believe that the people of this state would definitely be able to relate to me more than any of the candidates that are running. Yes, ma'am. Well, my main 
focus on my campaign is to reduce the amount of taxes in California. Um, our debt here is swelling beyond belief, so of course I would like to attack our debt. It's nearing two, three trillion dollars at this time, and that's not even factoring our unfunded liabilities such as pension, health care, etc. So um, I would love to have an opportunity to audit the state's finances. That way we see exactly where our money has been going this whole time. It's, that's the thing is we're paying hundreds of millions of dollars each year to tour, towards taxes for that's supposedly going to go towards um, building up our infrastructure or making our schools better or making our health care system better or making our neighborhoods safer, but they haven't. So I would love to have an opportunity to audit the state's finances. That's one of the first things that I would do once elected. And of course, reduce the amount of taxes that we have in the state to provide a bit of relief to the people. Uh, we're the sixth largest economy in the world because of the GDP, the people, you. We're the hard working parts, you know, <laughs> that's keeping this state going. So I believe that if we reduce the state's income tax, which is currently 13% to zero, that would allow people working hard to take home more of their money and spend it on their uh, high bills, etc. cetera. Um, but if you reduce the amount of taxes as well, that would reduce the amounts of cost for living. So uh, with property owners, I would like to reduce that to zero percent. It's currently 1%, which is one of the lowest in the nation, but California also has one of the highest property rates as well. So it makes our taxes for property values fifth in the, in the nation. It's the fifth largest because of those housing rates. So if we reduce it to zero, we'll allow property owners to um, make more equity off their investment for their home. And I would also like to uh, reduce the state's sales tax to 7%. It's currently 7.5% for the statewide, but then we go to certain local taxes where it's 13, 30%. Um, so I again would like to level the state sales tax to 7%. That way people can buy more products at a cheaper price. So um, reducing the amount of debt in the state, uh, getting rid of spending, getting rid of taxes, and allowing the people of the state to have more money is one of my first priorities once I assume office. All right, any other more questions? No? All right, well thank you so much again. And if anybody would like to sign, just... <coughs> <coughs>